Psalms chapter 148, and we're looking at the spirit world and what we did last uh, Wednesday is we just kind of laid the groundwork of some, I guess the groundwork of the universe, if you can lay the groundwork of the universe, <laughs> that's kind of what we did, kind of lay out and uh, showed you some things according to the scripture, and I think uh, as you study and read your Bible, a lot of things will make more sense uh, when you start putting the things in their proper places. We're going to read the first six verses again and get the context here, and we'll make some comments, and then we'll move on. Psalms chapter 148, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise ye Him, all His angels. Praise ye Him, all His host. Praise ye Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all ye stars of light. Praise Him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass away. The last time we read the whole chapter, I believe we did, we mentioned on it, but we're, we're going to stop there. And uh, just a couple things again by recap. And verse 1, it says, Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, plural. And I showed you that the Bible clearly shows you that there is three heavens according to the scriptures. If you pay attention closely as we went through in Genesis chapter 1, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven, singular, and the earth. So uh, that heaven there is what we would call the third heaven. That's where God's at. And if you look in the order of creation, it kind of goes backwards. And then what you'll see in Genesis chapter 1 is God makes the second heaven. And he says there that he put, the, obviously, the sun, the moon, and the stars there. And that's called the heaven, so that's outer space. Also in Genesis chapter 1, around verse 20, he talks about the heaven where the birds fly. And that's the first heaven. So anywhere that sky is, what the Bible calls the firmament, is also called the heaven. So you have three heavens. The first heaven on earth as we look out in the sky. The second heaven, outer space. And as Paul said, I was caught up to the third heaven. Uh, that's obviously up in glory where the Lord Jesus Christ is at. Uh, verse 2 says, Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his host. And obviously that's uh, what we're going to get into, is the angels and all of his hosts. There's created spiritual beings out there. Uh, then um, for time's sake, look uh, verse 4. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. So verse 4 clearly states that there is water above the heavens. So it has to be above two heavens. We know it's above the first heaven, and it's above the second heaven. And that's the waters that are above the heavens. Plural. So that's what that is. Now, what we did is we ran all the references. Again, I showed you in Job chapter 38, verse 30, that the waters, uh, the, excuse me, that the face of the deep is frozen. So this water here is frozen, the face of the deep. It's frozen. That is the waters that are above the heavens. Then we went to Job chapter 26, and he stretches the, out the north over the empty place. And what we did is I showed you all those verses that connect the Lord uh, with God with the north. And he stretcheth out the north over the empty place. That's that second heaven. And that's where he hangeth the earth. He hangeth the earth on nothing. Over the empty place. Again, that's Job chapter 26. And we, look at, we looked at all that. Um, then in Job chapter 37, he said, The breadth of the waters is straightened. Again, how do you straighten water? It's frozen. It's straightened. Um, Job chapter 37 says that sky or that waters is, is a molten looking glass. Again, it's talking about that uh, deep, that frozen. It's a molten looking glass. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that some more. I um, also kind of mentioned, that's why in Genesis chapter 7, and verse 11, when it talks about Noah's flood, it says that the great deep was broken up. And that's because that's what you do with ice. You break it up and it comes down to the earth and melts and uh, floods the universe. And flood, I'm sorry, yeah, floods, floods the world. And we looked at all that. So that's kind of where we left off in Psalms chapter 148. Now let's uh, pick up in verse 5. Psalms 148, verse 5, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. 
Now, what was created? Everything he mentioned from verses 1 through 4. Obviously, the heavens, the earth, the deep, but also the angels and the host of them. And the point is this. All these beings and spiritual beings we're about to study, they are, know this, they all are created beings. None of them are eternal. The only ones eternal is, the Lord, is God Almighty. But the rest of them, the host and the angels, they are created uh, look at um, Colossians chapter 1, and we'll be back to Psalms 148 in a minute. Colossians chapter 1. The reason that's important is it's important to put these things in perspective because you're going to see some wild things in this book. And uh, these, these spiritual beings are nothing to fool around with. As I mentioned last week, when you get into the spirit world, the only place that you should study about the spirit world is from the Bible. A lot of people get messed up when they start reading other books and, and dive into the things of the spirit world. The only safe place is the scripture. These are the words of God. And the reason it's important to know they were created is because there's one mightier than they are. And that's God Almighty. So no matter how big and strong and powerful these things are, they're still created beings uh, created by God. Look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. The Bible says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and inv invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all th things were created by him and for him. That's every one of these things we're going to study. They were created by God and for God. They all had a purpose. So again, back to Psalms chapter 148, they're all created, created by the Creator, God Almighty. Psalms 148, verse 6, He also established them forever and ever, and hath made a decree which shall not pass away. Uh, the point is here, God created all this. And I'm not saying 100% sure this is exactly identical to what the universe is, but I'm telling you what, it's pretty close. But God created it all. You know how the face of deep stays there? Because God told it to stay there. You know how the earth hangs on nothing and doesn't go anywhere? Because God put it there. And he's, gonna, he's in control of all things, exactly as his word said. All right, then as I mentioned last week, when you get down to the rest of the chapter in Psalms chapter 148, Verses 8 through 14, you see the progression that then goes down to the earth and the things on the earth. Uh, so again, verse 1, the praise starts up in the north and heaven, and then it goes down to the second heaven, then it goes down to the, the first heaven in those orders. So what's the point? Everything that's created is created to praise God. It doesn't matter if it's in, in heaven in glory. It doesn't matter if it's in outer space or if it's here on this earth. That's what this chapter is about. All things were created to praise God. From the highest of the heavens to the lowest, they were created. And you'll, you, you can read that and really pay attention uh, to that progression. It starts in the third heaven and comes down all the way to the earth. So, now let's look at uh, one of these first uh, spiritual beings. Look at Revelation chapter 4. And I, I tell you, uh, let me just give you a, a word of advice. And I'm not saying this because I'm right. I'm saying this to make you think. There is nothing wrong with reading good men's work. There's nothing wrong with that. But the Bible's the final authority. It doesn't matter what any man says. I, I mean, there's respect in men I read. But you know what sometimes I see? I say, that can't be right. You know why I say it can't be right? Because it doesn't match Scripture. So, so the point is this, it's okay if you got a commentary and they're good Bible readers, read it, but don't take that as face value because they could be wrong. They're, they're men, flesh just like you and I. The reason I bring that up here in Revelation chapter 4, we're going to read about the, these spiritual creatures and every commentator I picked up said there's cherub, they are cherubs. I'm going to show you the problem with that and we're going to discuss these spiritual beings here. Look at Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I'll show these things which must be hereafter. You know what I believe? You can say I, you don't believe it. You know what I believe? I believe there's a literal door here. 
up into the third heaven. I mean, it might not be made out of wood, but there's a door there. And yeah, it probably is, sister. And there's a door there. And there's times in the Bible when that door opens. And you'll be surprised when you start reading and how a light came out of heaven. That door was open. And how that door is open, something's coming out. But there's a door there. From the second heaven through the deep, there's a door there. And this is where John's getting caught up to. He sees that door open. And he's caught up to that third heaven, but there's a door there. All right, now look at uh, verse 2. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a, thr a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardis stone. And there was a rainbow around about the throne. In sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire before, uh, before the, uh, excuse me, seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne... There was a sea of glass, like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. So what you have is John sees this scene. He, he's caught up to the third heaven, that door. He's caught up there. And in heaven, what do you see? He sees someone on a sea of glass. That's that deep. That's frozen there. And he sees these 24 elders. Then he sees these beasts there. And this is what John's seeing in that throne. There's no doubt who's sitting on that throne. That's the Lord Jesus Christ on that throne. And he's seeing the very throne of God in the third heaven. First of all, let's look at that sea of glass. Look at Revelation chapter 15. Again, that sea of glass is exactly what we've been studying. That is that frozen deep. That's that molten looking glass. And in Revelation, it calls it the sea of glass. Here, Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels, having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over his number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And you can keep reading this. So what's the point there? There they are. They're standing on the sea of glass. That's up there in the third heaven. So again, the sea of glass is that deep. It is the floor of heaven. And it's a molten looking glass. And we won't run the references. But you ever been out on a very sunny day on a frozen lake? I mean, no snow, just a frozen lake. And that sun, you know what that sun will do when it beats on that frozen glass? It will blind you. I mean, you need sunglasses, you need to look away. Listen, this is not going to compare to the glory in heaven. That sea of glass, that frozen deep, is going to reflect the glory of God like you've never seen before. And there, there's going to be singing like there's never been before. And that's what John's seeing there in Revelation chapter 4. Now let's go back and look at these, these, uh, these beasts here. And I'll give you uh, three options, and I'll tell you what I believe they are, and... As I told you, most of the commentaries, they say they're cherubims or cherubs. Uh, now, in your Bible, there's, uh, and we'll, we'll get to this, basically on the spirit world, on the good side, if you want to say it like that, you have cherubs, you have seraphims, and you have angels. And they're all different. And, of course, you have God, and there's other beasts in that, but, I mean, those are really your three classes of, of spiritual beings. Now, look, let's look at these in Revelation uh, chapter 4. And we're going to make some notes and, and study this thing out. Look at verse 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like in the crystal in the midst of the throne. And round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion. And the second beast was like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was a like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not night and day, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. All right, so a couple things about these beasts. As I told you, there, there's really three possibilities. The first is uh, most people say they're cherubims, and they, they say they're cherubims because of their faces. And their faces, in verse 7, it says they had a face of a lion, 
a calf, a man, and an eagle. All right? Now, so why does that mean they're, they're a cherub? Well, look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel chapter 1. You ever read Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 10? That's, those are some wild chapters there. And uh, uh, you, you can do what you want, but that's not figurative. That's literal. Uh, God's describing some literal creatures there. And uh, they get in wheels, <laughs> inside of wheels. And they fly around as lightning. And uh, guess what? They don't have to turn. They just go straight. And then they just go right, and then they just go backwards. You ever see anyone that says something flying through the sky like that? They can't explain how these, these UFOs turn, and they, they say they're just bright lights, and they go one direction and the next direction. You have no idea what they're seeing. But look here in Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel chapter 1. Uh, verse 1, Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, that I was among the captives by the river of Chabar, that, the, watch this, the heavens were opened. Again, two heavens were opened. And I saw a vision of God in the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of the king Jeconiakim's captivity. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of Chaldeans by the river of Chabar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the what? Came out of the north. We so showed you what God's connected with the north. And a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. And a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So they looked like a man. And we're going to see all why. They had like the body and the arms and the hands of a man, as we keep reading. And everyone had four faces. And everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the soles of their feet was like the soles of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of varnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. And they four had their four faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went everyone straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, the four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and the four had the face of an ox on the left side. The four also had the face of an eagle. Thus their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went everyone straight forward, whither the spirit was to go. They went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. And like the appearance of lamps, it went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, and the living creatures ran and were in turn as the appearance of a flash of lightning. And that's how they moved, and that's how people saw them, as a flash of lightning. I mean, uh, and again, I'm not saying every time this is, I, I, I'm in the video world. Trust me, there is a lot of manipulations. There is a lot of fake videos out there. But I've seen some, and this thing's going this way, this thing's going this way, and next thing, it's gone. Just like lightning. And they all call them UFOs, and they're searching for some aliens from another country. I'm telling you, they have no idea what they're fooling with. Amen. There's a spirit world out there that can manifest itself sometimes. And you want to see a good description, keep reading it in, on your own time, Ezekiel 1. Read the whole chapter, Ezekiel chapter 10. You'll see some wild stuff in there. Uh, but a, a couple things I want to point out in this chapter, and you don't have to turn back when I can read all, but verse 1, it says, the heavens were opened. Verse 4, it says, the world wind came out of the north. It talks about their brightness in verse 4. And then there was four living creatures. They had the likeness of a man in verse 5. Everyone has four faces. Read that again, verse 6. Look at verse 6. Everyone had four faces. Remember, there was four beasts, or four living creatures, it calls them there. But everyone has four faces. All right? And they also have four wings. Another thing interesting about these cherubs, verse 7, their feet are straight. The soles of a calf's feet. And we're going to get to it, but I'll just throw it out there. The devil's not an angel. 
The devil is the anointed cherub. Now you know why they were worshiping a cow when Moses went up to eat, uh, on, the mount, uh, on the mountain to get the law from God? They were worshiping the devil. Now you know why that cow is sacred in India? Because it's connected to the devil. These cherubs are. All right, so that's uh, some connections there, some things you need to know. Verse 8, they had hands of a man under their wings. Verse 9, their wings were joined one to another. So it's like these, these four beasts who each had four faces, who each had four wings, they then joined together and became one thing. And what you're going to find out in chapter 10 is they're connected with transporting the throne of God, flying around and bringing the throne of God from heaven to earth. And that's going to happen one day. It's going to happen by some cherubs and they're going to join together. All right. And again, as I told you already in verse nine, wherever they went, they go straight this way, straight this way. There's no turn because they got four faces Whatever way they want to go, they go straight all the time. Now, here's what I want to point out. This is why that everyone says in Revelation chapter 4, these are cherubs. Look back in verse 10. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. And they four also had the face of an eagle. So the four faces match the four faces in Revelation chapter 4. They have the exact same faces. So that's why everyone says Revelation chapter 4, these are cherubs. Now, let's, let's look at a, a, a couple more things in regards to this. Let's uh, look at Ezekiel chapter 10, because I want to look at these cherubs carefully, and then I'll make my comments and we'll try to tie it together. Ezekiel chapter 10. Now, you can see over and over again, these are clearly talking about the cherubs. Verse 1 talks about the cherubs. Verse 2 talks about the cherubs. Uh, so on forth, verse 4, verse 5, I think almost in every verse. Verse 6, verse 7. All right, and we'll pick up for time's sake. Look at uh, verse 8. And they appeared in the cherubs, the form of a man's hand under their wings, just like what we read. Uh, we're in Ezekiel 10, verse 9 now. And when I look, behold, the four wheels... By the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by another cherub, and the appearance of the wheel was the color of burl stone. And as for their appearances, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. When they went, they went up on the four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither they looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went. And their whole body, and their backs, and their hands, and their wings, and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that, that they four had. As for the wheels, it was cried unto the, them in my hearing, O wheel. Watch this in verse 14. Everyone had, the, everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. The second face was the face of a man. And the third, the face of a lion. And the fourth, the face of an eagle. So in Ezekiel chapter 10, we see these four faces are this, and you could probably have to write them down to keep track of them. It's the cherub, the man, the lion, and the eagle. Now, by simple reasoning and simple uh, deduction, what we learn here is the face of a cherub is the one face that was substituted from the list in chapter 1. You know what that was? The ox. That's right. That's the one that's different. So the list from chapter 1, it calls it an ox, but the same beast described in chapter 10, the one name that has changed is a cherub. So a cherub in its, in its form is an ox. And then, of course, you have the, the faces again. You have the face of the man, the face of the lion, and the face of the eagle. All right, putting it all together. What I'm saying is sometimes when it talks about a cherub, it may just have that face of an ox. Now, here is the problem with making Revelation chapter 4 cherubs. Yes, they have the same faces. Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10, every cherub has four faces. In Revelation chapter 4, they are four separate beasts. Not one that has four faces. We can go back there and read it. Look at, uh, look at back in Revelation chapter 4. We just read in Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10 that these beasts all had four faces. Look back in Revelation chapter 4. Now, I'm going to give you some possibilities to throw in here, too, because this stuff gets wild. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Look again carefully in verse 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. 
And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion. And the second beast was like a calf. And the third beast had the face of a man. And the fourth beast was a, like a flying eagle. So Revelation 4 says these are four separate beasts and they all have one face. All right? Or we see in Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 10, each beast had, or each living creature had four faces. Now, here's the possibility, even though I don't lean this way. Could these spiritual beings separate? And could they be, when they're standing and they're not transporting in the throne, one beast, and then they come together, and then they form those four faces? Could they, I guess what I'm saying, could they shape shift and go into one? I guess you could say possibly, yes. I know, we're going to get to that. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a minute. That's another problem with it. Uh, but right now we're looking at the faces. So, so that's what I'm saying. So is it possible that they could shape, shift, and come? Yeah, I guess. But we don't have scripture to say that. So right now what we see is Revelation 4. There, there's a difference. And things that are different are not the same. And, and the second thing is the big problem is, as uh, Sister Cheryl just said, in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 6, if you want to write it down, in Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 21, those cherubs have four wings. In Revelation chapter 4, look at verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings. So now you've got to try to figure out what happened to two of their wings. Again, is it possible they lost two wings when they, yeah, it's possible, but why? I mean, you don't need to do that. I think there's a much better answer. I don't think these are cherubs. Although similar, although they have similar faces and so on and so forth. And again, what you, you'll learn here is God's representing all of the world. He's representing every kingdom from domesticated to wild to mankind. So maybe God said, you know, you're going to have these faces. So anyways, those are the two big problems that I have with making Revelation chapter 4 cherubs. Again, I'm not here making a big deal about anything, but we want to know the truth. And people can be wrong. I don't think these cherubs. What do I think they are? I think they're seraphims. Seraphims because it matches better. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. And there's some reasons in my personal study. Obviously, some of them are pretty obvious. That I came to conclusion. I don't think these are cherubs. I think they're seraphims. Look at Isaiah chapter 6. Now, this is the only place in your Bible where a seraphim is mentioned by name. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah 6, 1, in the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. That's that high and mighty lofty one we read about in the north. And a train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. All right? So God does not give us the description of their face because they're covered, but they have six wings. You know what else they're connected with? They both have in common, Revelation chapter four and Isaiah chapter six, is both connected around the throne of God. Right. Not only that, look at the next verse. Look what they both do. Verse three, and one cried one unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. You know who says that? Holy, holy, holy. The, the beast in Revelation chapter 4. Look back in Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. And the four beasts, each had of them six wings about him, and they're full of eyes within. They rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. So I say, better description of those, those beasts around the throne are seraphims. They have six wings, and they both cry out, holy, holy, holy. And if that's the case, which I believe it is, guess what you learn now? You learn what their faces are like. In Isaiah chapter 6, their faces are covered. Here he tells us what their faces are like, similar to cherubs, but they're separate beasts. So what you have, uh, what we've seen is uh, on uh, God's side, you have cherubims. Cherubims clearly, according to Ezekiel chapter 1 and Ezekiel chapter 10, each of them have four faces and four wings. And they're in connection with transporting the throne and other things too. Uh, the seraphims, another uh, spiritual being that God created, has six wings. 
and one face. And they cry, holy, holy, holy. All right, so those are the difference of cherubims and, and seraphims. And you can read, uh, obviously, when God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden, what did he put there? So they couldn't get back in. A cherubim with a flaming, cherubims with a flaming sword. All right, and there's other things. Brother Gary is going over the tabernacle. And on that mercy seat, you know what he has there? Cherubims, beaten and wood and overlaid with gold. Um, and as we get on to the evil side with the devil, we'll look back at the devil. I'll show you his connection with the cherubims. Uh, but for now, for time's sake, we're going to move on to angels. That's really your other created being is angels. So you have cherubims, seraphims, and hopefully you got the verses and know the difference between the two. And you also have angels. Look at Psalms 104. Psalms 104. Psalms 104, verse 4, the Bible who says, Who maketh his angels spirits, his, uh, his ministers a flaming fire. Again, so what you know about angels, angels are spirits. And they're ministers of flame of fire. Look at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, Of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Just again, the same verse quoting there, Psalms 104. So, first thing about an angel, it is a spirit. It's a spiritual being. And a minister of flame of fire. Now, this is, uh, I say important, because everything in the Bible is important. But every time an angel appears... And you have an angel described in your Bible. An angel never has wings, ever. You will not find an occurrence. That's why you have to understand what a cherub is. That's why you have to understand what a seraphim is. And that's why you have to understand what an angel is. Because I can tell you, I think I know two religions, and there's probably more right now, that claim an angel came to them and delivered them a book. You know what those two are? Mormonism and Islam. Both claim an angel gave them. But here's the problem. Both those descriptions of the angels, guess what it has? Wings. It's not an angel that delivered them a book. It's a cherub. And the devil's a fallen cherub. So you can learn some things about that. Beware of anyone who's got this revelation of an angel with wings. They're not dealing with an angel. Second thing. Uh, not only do they never have wings in your Bible. Every single time they appear as a man. Every time. That is their appearance. Look at Genesis chapter 19. You know what Cupid is, right? He's a devil. Literally. Listen to me. I, I, I know there's a couple children in here. You know one of the wickedest holidays there is? Valentine's Day. It's connected to a cherub. And it's connected with a whole bunch of people committing immorality and losing purity over a devil. I'm telling you, that's what it's connected with. I don't know where that came from. It's free. Genesis 19. <laughs> but it's true. You'd be surprised what happens on Valentine's Day with good girls. And caught up because they think it's a day of love. It turns into a day of lust. And it's all because of a, what, a little cute little fat cherub that they call an angel, the love angel? It's a devil destroying lives. Genesis chapter 19. Now watch this. Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat at the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, now my lords turn in, I pray you, <coughs> excuse me, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we all abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned into him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and they did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Remember, these are angels. We read that in verse 1. They are coming to Lot there. Look at verse 4. And before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young. 
and all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, watch this, where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now, well, this is the most disturbing verse in all the Bible. Verse 8, Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. O, and these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. How backslidden is perverted is the judgment of Lot. That will show you the influence of this world and ungodliness, what will do to a quote unquote man of God. Now we understand all the dispensation, all the things, but I'm saying there's a good practical lesson here. You better not sit in the gate of Sodom and think it's okay. That is an abomination in the eyes of God. It is wickedness in this church and you as individuals should always stand against it. And listen to me, and this man is so perverted, he's going to give his daughters over to these men. And these are wicked men, both old and young. I know people aren't going to like it, but don't ever buy in this nonsense that the Sodomites are peaceful people. They are not peaceful people. They are violent. Amen. The Bible calls them reprobates. And you know what they need? They need the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been down to the cities and witnessed whom, you know what they did? Slash my tires. And what did I do there? Preach the gospel to them that they need the Lord Jesus Christ. But these are wicked, wicked men here. Let's keep reading there. Verse 9, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs to be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house. Again, that's those angels there. To them and, and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great. So they were wearied themselves to find the door. Over and over again in that chapter, those angels came and the Bible called them men. Lot saw them and he said, come into my house. They were men. The wicked people of Sodom and Gomorrah said, where are the men? That's how they appear in your Bible. Every time they appear as men. Look at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. You hear more and more of these just... Absolutely tragic stories of the, these uh, uh, adopting little children and what they do to these children more and more in the news every day. And you're going to hear more and more of it. it. It's absolutely insanity. It is sick. It is it's absolutely insanity where our country's at Amen. in regards to morality. Uh, it, who would let two men adopt little kids out of their mind? And you'll see it all the time. Look at Hebrews 13. Look at verse 2. Be not forgetful, watch this, to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Now let me ask you this. If angels have wings, and they're busting out of their back, and they're walking down the road, how in the world are you going to entertain them unawares? It would be pretty obvious that's not a man. But if they appear just like a man, and they appear like a stranger on the road, that might be stopping by and on your bad day and you're in a rush and asking for direction, you might be careful how you entertain strangers because some have entertained angels unawares. The point is the only way they could be unaware that it's an angel if they look just like you and I. And all throughout the scripture, every time angels appear, they appear as men. Remember, they are spiritual beings. Gravity means nothing to them. They don't need wings to fly. <laughs> Listen to me. You're going to be able to walk through a wall and through a door. Now you explain to me how you do that. You've got to have a changed body. You're not going to do it in this flesh. You're going to run up walls. The ranks aren't going to be broken. How do you do that? You need a new body. All I'm saying is you don't put angels in, in our realm and, and bound by the nature of our law. They don't need wings to fly. All right, and you'll, you'll read that. Pay, pay attention when you read your Bible. Uh, there was one account, I don't think I have the reference, maybe I do, maybe we'll get to it, but it says there was an angel between heaven and earth and it was standing, just standing there between heaven and earth and just sitting there right in the midair. It doesn't need anything. Uh, anyways, uh, next thing, angels are, well, let, let's go ahead and cut off because I got a lot more on angels. We'll pick up next week, but angels are powerful. 
We're going to look at that. I mean, they are powerful. Well, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we do thank you for the night you've given us. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you for the liberty to preach and teach the truth in this church. And God, I thank you for people that just read and believe the word of God. And Lord, we thank you for this book. Lord, I know some of the stuff we read and, and uh, read about and it can seem overwhelming. But Lord, I'm glad that you're the creator that you're all powerful. And I'm thankful for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you help this church continue to stand on truth and righteousness. We thank you now. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ that you would give us traveling mercies and bless this church. In Jesus' name, amen.